In this demo, we're going to be talking about how you can plan a multi-plate print. So in this case, I have a relief block. And um, again, this works with, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to use a relief block. You could use multiple monotype plates. You could have a scratch foam plate. You could have a wood block. It doesn't really matter. But I'll just talk you through how I think about setting up my registration system so that later I can get the different elements of the image to line up correctly between um, the different plates. So I've got here just a proof of the relief block and I just want to point out, it's pretty obvious, but I want to point out how the image mirrors and that's really important to remember because if you try to just trace your block and then um, turn your registration plate face down, things are going to be misoriented. You know, they won't align when you try to print them. So it's really important that all of your blocks have the same images on the same side of the plate in order to line up right on the print. So I was trying to figure out how to get a second block. First I thought I would just use my monotype plate that we had used for our trace transfers and some other processes. But I realized that this plate is 8 by 12 whereas the relief block that I had built out of cardboard was eight and a half by 11. So I could, you know, if it was an, an issue where not all of the color had to go all the way to the edge, there's a chance I could make that work, but it's much easier if you can just get both plates to be the right size to start with. So instead of using my um, first choice, which would be the monotype plate, I'm gonna actually resort to using one of our registration protector plates, which is just a cheap, uh, a mat that I found at the dollar store for like two for a buck. So I'd like to print on the shiny side. I'm just going to use this for my monotype and I'm going to mark off where the image should end so that I can make sure that I have a clean edge there or create a stencil later as I'm printing to keep those edges from getting any ink. So the first step would be just to trace where the block needs to be and I'm doing this on the matte side of the of the plate. If it's shiny on both sides it doesn't matter it should work fine still. So you can be real careful if you want to with a ruler and measure it. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it for efficiency here. And I'm going to mark with a china marker. This is kind of a grease pen where the corners are. And um, I could outline the whole thing or I can use my drawing later to, to line that up. But it is pretty important to know where the corners of the block need to be. The next step would be getting an image so that I have it oriented the same way as the block. So this is backwards from what the way I need it to be. So one option is to, on, on our film, and I've already done this to save a little bit, bit of time, but I've traced the print of the plate. So not the way the plate itself needs to go, but the reverse image, the mirror image of the plate. I traced it in grease pencil again. The stuff sticks really well to plastic. And I trace just the key blocks. I don't need to know where all of these lines are because it's not going to be a key area where I have to change colors. But I was really concerned about where the light is going to be hitting the chairs because I want to be able to wipe that out on the second plate. And um, so that's one option is to just sort of line up the corners of the, the plate, make sure that's marked in on your transparency. And then you won't be inking up the side of the plate that has the crayon on it. It's important to um, label for yourself so you don't accidentally line it up the wrong way. I actually wrote a note to myself, this side down for monotype pra practice. So I'll actually have the shiny side up when I'm adding the ink. And um, in that case, we'll have our monotype plate oriented the same way as the actual relief block that needs to be printed with it. So the nice thing about this too is that the crayon can't rub off or it can't affect the colors of the ink because it's on the underside of the of the registration jig. Another option that might be a little bit faster if you don't want to have to retrace all the key marks on this is to, when you do your practice proofs, print it onto a translucent paper like tracing paper. I think this was actually just parchment paper from a grocery store and it's see-through enough that we can lay it down underneath our registration jig so let's go back to that original one that I had planned. And again, I want to print the ink on the shiny side of the plate. So I'm going to tape down, I'm sorry, let me get this straight. I'm going to tape it down this way. So I'm kind of lining up to make sure that it's kind of square on my um, film, on my plastic sheet. And 
see through it well enough to be able to realign it moved a little bit and then I'll tape it down with some artist tape um, at the corners so that it's not moving around So you want the print to read the right way on the back side of your template. The critical thing to always check is that the two blocks that you're going to be inking up are lined up the right way to one another. So that's a good spot where I will pause for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and ink up the relief block just using straight black Akua ink and then I'm going to do a monotype plate on this one and try to clean up my margins um, but I'm going to roll, roll different colors in different areas of the block. I'm going to um, ink up the bottom part as brown and then I'm going to kind of wipe away the areas that I want to keep white on the chairs and then I'll have some sort of um, green or um, I'm not sure about the background but I'll work that out. So I'll come back once the two plates that need to get printed are both inked up. I've also got paper already dampened so that should be ready to go. I wanted to make sure that the heavyweight Canson paper is um, receptive to the ink. I wanted a really nice clean transfer so I, I'm dampening it a little bit before we print. You can try printing it dry but there's a chance that the image will look a little bit grayed out. It may not transfer as completely as you as you're used to seeing it on the washi paper. So those are things to um, prepare before you're before we're ready to print the next um, the next step of this video. So I'll pause here. All right I got part way through the preparation here. I've already inked my relief block in black ink so I'm setting it aside. It can stay for um, you know probably an hour without me worrying about the ink drying. This one's about halfway done so I've used a small roller and I've just done some custom uh, I've got a super translucent sky that I rolled on very thinly and then I mixed sort of some random greens and, and combined the roller and the um, toothbrush to kind of give it a soft focus um, appearance back there. I just have been pretty loose and free with uh, applying the ink there, but I'm trying to keep the ink still pretty thin. I don't want to have a big thick layer that's going to ooze out into the borders of my image, so I am trying to make sure that I don't lay it on too heavily. And then I would lift up my stencil so that I could see through to where the chairs are. I needed to make sure I lifted out the lights on the arms of the chair. I wanted a little bit of light on the back of the chairs, and I thought it might also be nice to have a little bit of light hitting the top railing of the fence to help it stand out a little bit more. Um, and then for the bottom part here I was debating on what kind of color to use and I ended up um, thinking that maybe a light tan or kind of this peachy color might be nice. I didn't want to go too dark because I knew that the black was going to be printed over it and this has already gone a pretty dark value. This is kind of middle value. Um, it's hard to tell how much of the white of the paper is going to show through but I think it's still going to be kind of in the mid-range tone. So I wanted something a little bit lighter here to kind of keep that foreground close to us. And I've cleaned off my brayer from the black ink so I'm ready to spread out the color for the decking. So I'm trying not to extend it above where, where the grass area is going to be. And I don't want to get too much of the green on my roller because I don't want to have to run and um, go wash that off. So just kind of apply a fairly thin layer. I'm realizing as I'm doing this that maybe adding white was not such a great idea because it's hard to see through this color of ink compared to the, the ones that I had just added transparent base to. So we'll have to maybe lift off a tiny bit of it. I can start to see the chairs a little bit through there. But I'm trying to be careful not to hit the green areas. So I want to just my head in the way sorry yeah um let's see how that goes okay so it may not be quite perfect but so now in order to see where the chairs are i'm gonna maybe put it against a white background instead of this cardboard let's see if you can see through it a little bit better okay yeah that's a little bit better so i want to first of all i want to see if my line where the there's a black line on my relief block that I'm thinking may not print real precisely over that, but I think at this point um, to fix it is going to take a little bit too much time for the demo. So I'll just go ahead and show you how I would lift out the arms of the chair 
and um, I'm not worried about having to cut the whole chair shape out because I, I'm pretty convinced that the black ink is going to cover the tan ink pretty well. So I'm not too worried about that, although there's a chance that that might affect how that prints. I'm mostly concerned about lifting out the color of ink on the top surfaces of the arms of the chair. The larger chair actually goes clear up here. So one of the arms is up here. It's already been wiped away when I wiped away the um, areas on the green part of the block. So now I'm just kind of focusing on this triangular shape. And I need to decide if it's important that these little white areas print. It may not be that important because um, it'll be, for one thing, a, a really challenge. Um, well, actually it may not matter because if it, yeah, I'll wipe it all out. Let's, let's try it. So I think I need a little bit more light to see exactly where that edge of the chair is. And I'm not worried about going all the way to the edge of that shape, but I do want to make sure that I don't accidentally wipe away any areas where I want the deck of the, or the um, planks of the deck to show. So here's where I have to be pretty careful. Right there. Okay, and there. Okay. So these are the most critical areas to remove. These other parts would be kind of optional. All right, so I think, um, for this part, I might be able to get by with using a piece of card stock for some of it. Depends how smooth that piece of card is, whether it's going to lift it off cleanly or not. Actually, I can go all the way over to here. What I don't want to do is act like a snowplow and push a big, thick layer of ink to one edge of that shape, because then that mound of ink, when I start burnishing, is just going to flatten out and um, mess up the image again. So you want to actually remove the ink if you can, not just shove it to a different part of the plate. So I'm going to do my best to kind of get a nice crisp edge there where I need it without rubbing into the areas where I want to keep the tan part of the deck showing. I'm still okay there. I saw a little bit of wipe there and I was worried that I might have um, exposed the deck area. And then here, I'm, it's such a small shape. I can use a Q-tip or I might even use a scrap of mat board um, just on its corner. And again, I'm afraid I'm going to get my head in the way of the camera, but I need to get over where I can see the shapes. All right, that might be as much as I'm going to do. And it's still not lifting off the ink clearly enough, so I think what I'll do is switch to a um, skewer with a little bit of t-shirt scrap wrapped around it and see if I can get a little bit more ink off of there. So this is just a little kitchen skewer, like a bamboo skewer, and I'm going to hold that piece of fabric around it as tight as I can, try to keep my arm up off the plate. And I want to lift that as clean as I can, so it really a nice bright shape there. Okay. So this area now, I can just use my finger. Again, I'm trying to be really careful not to touch parts of my plate where I don't want to mess up the ink. And that might be all I need to worry about. Um, I, I think I'll lift a little of these legs. Just I'm a little nervous that the black ink may not cover this thick layer of tan. So I'm not I'm not going to try to remove all of that ink, but I do I do think I'm going to try to remove a little bit closer to those outer contours so that I have a better chance of having some nice solid blacks on this last leg too. Okay, pretty careful there. All right, so I think we're pretty close to being ready to print this and see how it looks. Um, any other little residue on there, now's the time to get it off if you don't want any of that color on your plate. All right, and then here's where we want to clean up the edges of the plate. You can use um, a stencil. You know, we've done that with the other 
monotypes. In fact, I think just because it's pretty important that these edges are straight, I think I will get some scraps of, of um, tracing paper. <laughs> Got these little bits stashed away different places. So, And I'm trying to be as careful as I can so that it's going to line up right where the relief block would hit. And I think I'm going to turn them a little shorter so I can tape them down. There's less chance that they're going to be shifting around on me then. That one moved a little bit. Let's get it back into position. These were cut edges, not just torn, so they're pretty precise, as long as I can line them up straight. Don't let them shift around too much while you're getting the tape on. mostly checking to see exactly where the black parts of the plate end so that I have a little bit more artist tape here. strip at the top. One more. The top's not as critical that it's exactly where the plate is because no part of the cardboard block actually prints way up there at the very top, but I still would like it to be a nice square angle if possible, so I do want to take a little bit of care there as well. Alright, so my borders taped down so that I don't accidentally um, pick up some of that excess ink. And I think we're ready to go. So I'm worried that my sleeve or my arm is going to touch down onto this ink, so I'll pause for a second, clear all this off to the side, and then we'll get our dampened paper out and print our monotype first. That's the more critical one that the plates, that the paper be damp for and then um, printing the relief block on top of that. It would be okay if the paper gets a little bit drier for that stage of it. So um, I'll pause here for a second and clear away this mess and um, we'll get to printing. All right, so we've cleared our ink mess away. We've got nice clean hands. I spent so much time washing my hands when I'm printing. And um, I'm pulling out the dampened paper. So Looking at the paper, I no longer see a real pronounced sheen, but it's kind of limp and cool to the touch. So I know it's got a little bit of moisture in it, which is probably a good amount for this print process. And I've got to get it lined up on my jig now. So I've taped down my jig just to kind of prevent that from sh shifting around. And I know that my print paper is about an inch longer than my printing template is. So I'm going to just try to aim for um, lining up the top and the two sides of my paper and then we'll let the bottom hang off a little bit but I want to make sure it doesn't drop down onto the plate until I've got the top lined up as well as I can. Okay, And then once it's down try not to let it shift around even if you know it's not quite square. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. It looks like since my printing paper is the same size as my jig I can't actually tape this to my jig so I'm taping it to the table and um, since I've taped the jig down too, it shouldn't shift around too much. But I, I want to be kind of careful because the paper's damp. So do a little bit extra care to make sure that tape is really attaching well to the paper before you start burnishing. And then since the paper's wet, if you're rubbing pretty aggressively, you might actually start breaking the paper down. So it's going to be important to have another uh, buffer layer as you're burnishing. So I'm going to get a piece of parchment paper here. I've got a piece here. Uh, you might also want to try freezer paper for this process since the paper is a little bit damp. Um, it may 
make the parchment paper ripple up a little bit but um, I've got a um, barn here I'm gonna start with that a wooden spoon works just great too just gonna show you a few different tools you could use and I'm gonna have to kind of peek to see how well this monotype beat transfers to our heavyweight um, this is Canson edition uh, actually this one yeah, it's either Canson Edition or it may be Lennox paper. I might have gotten my two papers mixed up. This this seems a little bit of a um, warmer white, possibly. So it might be Lennox, but either way, they both are real similar papers. And um, kind of peek to see how things are going. Okay, we're getting some transfer. It's not super crisp yet still, so I think we need a little bit more pressure. I'm going to switch to the wooden spoon and just be pretty methodical about trying to cover every square inch of the plate. So I'm just going to run up and down in kind of stripes here, trying to make sure I get all the way to the edge of the image, back up, and we'll just kind of check to see if that's a little bit better pressure anyway. So yeah, you can see the streaks though, so we don't want to have those streaks. So what I need to do is be a lot more careful, spend a little bit more time out toward the edges because I'm not getting that crisp edge yet. So if I come out a little bit further, with a wooden spoon and pay a little bit better attention to where the um, edge of the image is. I think we're going to have a nice straight line when we're done. So let's keep peeking. Yeah, that's much better. So that's what I'm looking for in your images as well. A much more precise edge there to the image. So I'm going to pause for another minute. Um, I think this is going to take three or four minutes to just do the burnishing layer. So we'll come back when we're ready to switch to our, our uh, cardboard relief plate. Okay, so I've spent probably five or six more minutes. I just, to talk you through what I did, I was, you know, going stripe by stripe this way, and then I was rubbing this way across all the way down, and then I'd do another angle, and then I was doing circles. Put on some music you like, just listen to an audio book, take your time, get in the zen of uh, printing it, and just uh, be really patient, because you don't want to rush this process. You want to make sure you get a nice, even transfer. It's okay if the paper's drying a little bit as you go. There should be enough moisture in the paper to make the transfer. If you realize that your paper is just way too dry, what you can do is keep it hinged, flip it up out of the way, and then uh, lightly mist it again with some um, clean water. Um, it's a little riskier to rub the sponge across because the paper's kind of fragile and the ink's on there now, so um, misting it would probably be your best bet. But that's, a, that's another way that you can salvage a print that might be um, too dry, if the paper's too dry. So we're ready to um, swap out from printing the monotype plate to printing the relief block. I'm going to get this other stuff out of the way so I have a little bit more space. We're going to carefully kind of reveal the image here. I think this is lighter because, not because I didn't rub enough, but because I didn't quite apply the ink evenly. So all the rubbing in the world is not really going to solve that at this point, but um, we've got a pretty good image. I, I, um, I guess we're kind of out of the camera range. Let me see if I can <laughs> move it there so you have an idea of what we're seeing upside down. I can't unhinge it for you right now, but we've got kind of a grayed out background, which is, which I think is going to work pretty well for our, um, landscape that's beyond the, the railing of the fence. And now what I need to do is get our wood block print right in the same spot, not wood block, but um, cardboard relief. So um, I could leave this on and just put my block right on top, or I could try to clean it all off. Um, it's kind of a toss up. I think I guess I, I'll just kind of get rid of this stuff. Some of the ink oozed through a little bit and I'm thinking it might affect the way the next parts print. So I'll just go ahead and try to quickly clean off this um, part of the block. And um, we'll just use the same template for our guidelines for where to put the cardboard block. So I, I'm not too worried about this part of the image because the cardboard is going to be on top of that part. But um, I do want to make sure that the edges are really nice and clean. So I'm going to take a little bit of just some spray cleaner here to try to help me out. And I'll do a more thorough cleaning once I get the paper stencil off the back side and, and we're all done with the print. But for now, it's mostly just focusing on trying to keep the borders nice and clean. All right, there's another clean corner of that frag. And 
So I will use our little non-skid sheet again so that there's less chance that that cardboard block is going to shift around as we're rubbing the plate. And this is, you just have to do your best estimate about where that plate needs to go. The other option for registering it is to lay the colored print face up and then position your cardboard block face down. So you're just kind of using the shape of the monotype plate as a reference for where to drop down that plate. And then you'd have to kind of carefully flip it over so you could burnish it. So um, again, this is just one way that you can kind of get things lined up. And um, I'm gonna shift it, oh, I can't, it's taped down. <laughs> Let me aim up a little bit higher again to kind of show you what I'm gonna try to do here. So as I as I roll the, the print back down, I'm checking to see that my relief block is lined up as well as it can be. And it looks like my colored block might be a hair wider than my relief block. So, so far it looks like the black shapes are gonna fit within my colored area. And as we lay down this end too, you know, we're just going to have to hope for the best. So it's still a little bit damp. We want to be gentle with the paper and use our parchment paper again as a buffer. I have my lane on the floor. I could get it. And then here I, I do need to be kind of gentle because my plate has most of the image cut away. So it's a very irregular plate. It's really rough and bumpy. And if I'm too rough, I'm going to put some creases into the plate. So I want to be kind of gentle, but still hit all of the areas of the plate evenly. And here I'm not worried about pressure changes because I this paper's too thick to see through and know exactly where I'm pressing. So I'm just going for a nice even transfer of the whole image on the block. Yeah. Back to, okay. So I'll be kind of peeking as I go checking on my progress, seeing how well the image is transferring. It seems to already, even with very little pressure, be transferring the image a little bit more easily than it does on dry paper. So that's kind of exciting. I'm optimistic that this transfer is going to work out pretty well. So uh, I'll pause again for a while. I'll probably burnish for another five or six minutes. I see that there's some irregular, uneven parts, so you need to put a little more focus on getting those legs of the chair to be nice and dark. And um, after I've burnished for another five or six minutes, I'll come back and we'll continue. All right, so I did quite a bit more burnishing. I kept checking the image as I was going and noticing spots that were still too light and, and then went back and did more rubbing. And so I think we're pretty, uh, pretty well printed now and we're going to um, untape the paper and peel it off the Paper. So we do see more of the printmaking paper is peeling away when it's damp. You can kind of smooth out that texture with your fingernail um, if you are concerned about that. It is on the back side of the print, so it's not that big of a deal if um, there's a little bit of rough, rough spot on the back of the paper. Okay, let's peel it off without letting it shift too much and see what we've got. So, um, Squeeze them both on here. I'll shift this over. Okay, so just to compare the the print and um, get this cleaned up here too. So we don't get ink on our print. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with it. I, um, I'm glad this turned out kind of smoky and out of focus. I was hoping not to let that be too distracting back there. And then um, the other thing I'm pretty happy about is this uh, orange turned out a little darker than it looked on the white slab. I was worried it might be too pastel, but I think that's a decent level of darkness to help the deck stand out a little bit. My registration's pretty good here. I, I didn't quite line this up right, so that would be something if I were to try this again, I would have to wipe a little bit more away on the arm of that chair and the back corner of that chair. The other one looks pretty good. I missed one spot of light that I would have liked to have had up here on the back of that second chair. And there's a little bit of green showing through in spots, but overall I think I'm pretty happy. Um, I was able to get, and there's a little bit where the green's lapping down into the orange here. Um, so it's not absolutely perfect, but for the first attempt at combining the monotype and the cardboard relief, I think this is a pretty um, a pretty good 
exercise. I, I do like the white on the top of the rails to show a little bit of highlight from the sun hitting that. I think that worked pretty well. And I'm glad that the black was able to cover up the kind of orangey white ink that we had on the monotype plate there. So I wasn't sure how that might look here with the black mixed with the tan, but it seems to be covering it just fine. So, so that is a good, uh, pretty successful image. To dry it now, it's still a little bit damp. So if you just were to lay it out, I mean, if it's mostly dry, it, it may dry pretty flat, but if you're at all concerned that it might buckle up as it dries, you could put a clean sheet of parchment paper over it and then sandwich it between two of your blotters and put a little bit of weight on it. And that way the moisture will get absorbed out by the blotters. And um, one other thing I, I wanted to mention about the damp pack is you don't want to leave damp pack in a plastic bag for too long. It's possible that the, um, the paper can get moldy because of the moisture in there. So if you're not going to be using your damp pack within I would say um, two or three days. You should just spread out the piece of paper, let them dry again, and you can always redampen them later. So it, there's, it's not wasted paper. You just don't want to leave a damp pack where mildew can grow on it. You'll get these little black dots or red dots or green. You know, it's like molds growing on there. So, um, so make sure you don't leave it um, in a damp, warm spot for too long before you print on it. So I'll put a little bit of weight on this print to let it dry nice and flat, and then. Um, we're done with the demo. So you just clean your plates off the way you would any other time and um, do some experimentation. So try the monotype and the, and the relief block. You might try some stenciling. You might try, um, when we get to Sheen Collet, you can add layers of paper to certain areas of your print. There's so many options once you have a few key ingredients that you can um, mix together to create endless variations.